everyone, it's Adrienne Leah. This is a show and tell video and then I'll talk about some decks that I've been enjoying lately. So, Rye and I got this terrarium that has chia seeds in it and it has a rabbit which caught my eye. So, I put the stickers on he built the terrarium. I'll show a certain section right here. It's only been a couple of days and the seeds have already been sprouting. I've never had a chia seed grower, like the ones that you get that are a shape and then you can see it grow from it. So I, I thought it was really cool and Soon you'll be able to see it a lot more inside, but it came with a, a mini water spray bottle and I just thought it was cool. I put the sun there because the mushrooms are right here and I put the mushrooms away because they tend to like dark, damp places or dimmer. So. The stars, I didn't put a lot, but those glow in the dark too, and there's the star holes above as well, so I thought that this was really awesome, and I love the way that it turned out. I'm excited to see the results of our project. Another thing that I've been working on is a dream catcher as a and um I was gonna say something and I thought about it and then I decided not to say it. So you can't really see the strings on the inside but They are a gray color and I feel like it matches well with the or it goes well with the wood tones and I got the wood the branches from a park near me I'm not finished with it yet I'm still gonna add some embellishments to it but I thought that the crown is fitting for this time around. I'm just going to pause the video because I am going to hang this up in an area where it won't lean up against anything. So if you've seen these two decks before. They're the Tarot of the Elves and the Scorpio Sea Tarot. They're gifts from Bry, and I've been really loving them lately. Not only are they sentimental, but I love Low Scarabeo cardstock and the size. And the thickness that it has. So these are the backs again. And I knew that I was going to love the deck. Even Bri was like, oh, you're going to love this deck. But he mainly picked out the, the Scorpio Sea Tarot, which I've been eyeing for a while. And I've never seen it in stores until we went to a metaphysical shop near him where the creator is from so I thought that that was really awesome. So I love darker bold decks and they tend to be the fairy theme or an animal or shamanic or Celtic type theme. Those are the ones that I usually go for and gravitate to. Even when I have other types of decks, 
they could be a, a lighter, brighter type of deck, but I usually tend to go back to these, and they're just my favorite types of readers. They read so clearly for me, I feel like they, they get my personality, they get me. So, this one is a pretty direct deck, a really direct deck, I would say, and it's a smooth reader, and I do have decks that I read for other people with, and then some that I just read for myself with, and then there's decks that I do both with. This is a deck that I read for myself and I read for others with. And the other deck, this is one that I've really been enjoying because it has rich messages in it, in the guidebook. I enjoy reading this deck on its own too because it has a more of a minimalist type of card, cards, um, symbols, so I love this card. It's a little cheeky. I love the theme. I've never read the books to go with the deck, but I feel like if I ever feel like I want to do that, that I will, but I haven't gotten the urge to do that. I've been enjoying reading the guidebook, which is unusual for me because I tend to not read them because it's either I, I'm interested or I'm not interested, but it's not because of the way that the person wrote it. I just, um, I get my mind just gravitates to it or it doesn't. So these are really nice to see some of the messages and the, it's also uh, messages that can be on a it's like you're talking to somebody when you're reading the messages too. I I really love the way that um, Melissa wrote the book. She also wrote the Kitchen Table Tarot. And I enjoy her writing and I really appreciate the way that I've been interacting with this deck. I finished a deck bag. I did bind off early because I usually go to the bottom because I was running out of yarn. So I ended up making buttonholes for this one. And it's for the Spirit of the Animals Oracle. I saw this on Lavender Moon's channel first. Um, Amber from Lavender Moon's channel. And when I saw them, I just fell in love with them because of the they're so large because when I see oracle cards I usually like to have them distinguishable from tarot decks which is why I like the standard low scarabeo type of deck because um you're typically getting that size I like the really bulky sizes for the oracles and I love the messages and you can see the images clearly. I love the animals and the messages match the animals for me. That could be subjective because there are some decks like animal decks that I wouldn't put that animal that wouldn't be my first choice for a meaning of a card or the connection between those meanings and symbolism, but this one is really nice. And I usually pull this deck out 
for clients to when I'm giving an extra card for the Oracle message. And I give a little room at the top so it's not too clunked up. So, I brought out the Goddess Dream Oracle. I love this deck. I know that there's another deck that Wendy and Drew recently came out with. During the colder seasons, I didn't gravitate towards it at the moment. I might eventually, but I have a tendency of sticking to one of a, an artist deck and then it seems to be like that's the main deck I use with them. There may be an occasion where I don't do that, like with the, the Druid Oracles. I tend to like to get multiple decks of Will Worthington's artwork. Um, but those are few and far between. I love this artwork. I'd be interested in seeing this as a tarot deck because I do prefer tarot over oracle. I love the shamanic imagery, the warmth to it. There's a lot of there's a lot of depth to the the guidebook too. That's another deck that I like to rever um, go to the guidebook for. Another one is the. Aboriginal Dreamtime Oracle. That one is very deep and it can be solemn too. I don't bring that deck out a lot because um, it's the artwork isn't one that I gravitate towards first but the artwork is very beautiful too. So um Another deck that's on the darker side is one that I absolutely love. As soon as I saw it, it was one of those decks where I knew that we were going to get along. And it's the Edgar Allan Poe deck. I was thinking about doing a video about this deck. Because I did do a video about the um, Game of Thrones tarot, and the one of the main themes of the that video was reading the deck without referencing the actual series. And I don't know Edgar Allan Poe books. Um, but I know he's Philly native, as am I, uh, Philly born, sorry. And I thought that it was pretty sick. Uh, and when I saw the deck, there was this one card. It was the card that had the orangutan on it and it was for the Knight of Wands. And when I saw that card, I was like, this is like it, I'm gonna get this deck. So, Again, with the darker theme. 
but it's such a smooth reader for me, similar to the Terror of the Elves. The imagery is just ones that I think are soulful to me in a way. And going back to the Scorpio Sea, I did say this when I first introduced it on my channel that I was interested in it because half my chart is in Scorpio and I'm a Libra, but I can definitely feel a Scorpio because I feel things really intensely in different instances and it's definitely secondary to me. And if you're interested, I'm a Virgo rising. Yeah, this is a deck that I get down with. So, a recent purchase, I actually put this in one of my Lenormand bags because it was my smallest bag that I made. And I like making the luggage type of bags. I usually like them horizontal because I tend to think that it, it looks more complete or a balanced type of appearance to it. So I just wrap it around. This one now houses the Hanson Roberts Tarot. Some might be kind of surprised, but I did get this deck one time as a gift from Mary Bell who's more active on Instagram if you're interested. And there's an underscore and it's M-A-R-E-E -E underscore B-O-W and then she has an art one too. So she get, she gave me a, a trimmed version of the mini deck and I've been pretty into mini decks. I don't use them a lot because there aren't many that I have gotten before. Um, a deck that I was using was the Terra Nova and I actually use that solely for my finance readings because the connection was that it was one of the cheapest decks that I got in and it didn't do well when I was doing the love readings. It just, uh, for me when I was doing them, there wasn't that much of a connection there and that could be my sometimes extravagant taste uh, and maybe the energy was coming off of that so I really enjoy the Hanson Roberts now when it was trimmed it seemed a little bolder than what it needed to be so I was interested to see what the non-trimmed version would be like and I wasn't interested in the larger version I just happened to stopped by the bookstore and I saw this deck so I picked it up because it was inexpensive and it is one of those lighter ones but it has a sense of boldness to it and direct type of imagery you can say that it's a Rider Waite Smith clone but I don't really use that term loosely when it has its borders, it has more of a warmth to it. And I feel like the white borders soften the imagery up. And back to what I was saying when I was interested in the full size one, it, I feel like with the imagery, there isn't a lot of detail going on here. So I didn't feel like it would, I feel like it would be a little sparse. Now I have the opposite reaction to the Shadowscapes Tarot, and I used the check edition of that one because it's larger. The only thing is with that one is that it lacks warmth from the deck, like the original one has. The original one 
there's more warmth to the imagery. So that was my only thing with that. But it's a convenient size to have. I do like eye-catching decks. That was another thing. Where I like ones that expand my thoughts and my interpretations on different cards. Which is why the Scorpio C is one that's really um, invigorating for me. And the... Edgar Allan Poe one is more of a detailed one that I enjoy. I like the Everyday Witch Tarot. That's one that I really enjoy. And the Tarot of the Elves is uh, one of those bolder ones. There's a little more of a lightness to it, but I do like that the imagery has more of an outlined look to it. You can see that the drawings are outlined in black. Then it's more noticeable in, when you look at the cards. Compared to maybe if you're seeing other imagery and it's more blended in or the lines are thinner when you're drawing it or painting it. So, the extra card, it came with two extra cards, but not to actually have in the deck. But I thought this was like so cheeky, and I actually really love this. It's the Go All Up to All Believers. It looks like it has a gypsy woman, which reminds me of the Sherlock Holmes movie series that they might come out with the third one soon which I'm excited about and Edgar Allan Poe one kind of reminds me of that one as well as the steampunk tarot the steampunk tarot is also a really interesting one too so thank you guys so much for watching I hope this was um helpful and I hope to see you guys in another video.